Brooke followed Riven from the way station to Squin. It was a bit slower paced than when he traveled alone, but this is how it always went when Rook recruited new people to join his cause. They ran through the gate, past the guards, who nodded at Rook as they strolled by. So much for his disguise, he thought to himself. As they entered the city, Rook told Riven to wait for him outside, and he entered the closest bar he could find. The bar had a few patrons in it, but it wasn't as crowded as he was hoping it would be. He spoke to the barkeep about people for hire, and she pointed out one of the sheks sitting at a nearby table. Her name was Ruka, and she was minding her own business with a drink in her hand, so Rook went over and spoke with her. She recognized him immediately as the Invincible. He really needed to work on his disguise. Maybe growing out his hair and beard would help? Anyways, Ruka asked Rook if he noticed her horns, which left him a little confused. Ruka explained that she was the lone survivor of a brutal battle. All of her comrades were killed in action. Her people considered her a deserter and shaved her horns off, leaving small stubs in the place of what were once magnificent horns. She was reduced to being a lowly servant and was clearly unhappy about her situation. Rook explained his plans and told her that instead of being an outcast with the Shek, she could join the Liberators and fight alongside him as an equal. Ruka was clearly excited about his offer and accepted. Rook was pleased with her answer and looked around the bar to see if anyone else would be inspired to join his cause. He saw a person sitting at the next table and spoke with them. She immediately cut him off, asking Rook to buy her a drink. Sure, why not, Rook said as he got her a grog. She tossed it back quickly and let out a sigh of relief. When the drink was empty, she slammed her cup on the table and told Rook to get lost. With his pride a little damaged, he turned to the Shek sitting beside her and spoke with him instead. He was much more receptive to Rook's offer and for a 6,000 cats fee, he joined Rook's party. His name was Jeb and he was eager to prove himself to the Liberators. Rook promised that he would train him and they would accomplish great things together. That would all come soon, but for now he needed to find more people willing to join him. He went over to the inn hoping to find more drifters. He spoke with the innkeeper about hiring men, but he wasn't of much help. Behind him was a table with a mercenary for temporary hire and a gruff looking Shek warrior that was giving Rook dirty looks. Of course, Rook had to go over and speak with him. The Shek's name was Kang and he kept referring to Rook as the weak and fragile battleborn. Now in most cases, Rook's pride would be even more tarnished. Maybe he'd even challenge the Shek to a duel to make an example of him. But in this case, Kang insisted that he could protect the fragile battleborn Rook if he were to pay 6,000 cats to join the Liberators. Rook liked his gumption, and if Kang was half the fighter that he kept bragging on about, it would be a good addition to their team. Instead of taking the bait and fighting with Kang, Rook paid the 6,000 cats so he would join their cause. There was another Shek drifter in the corner of the dining area. Rook went over to see if she'd also be willing to team up and was immediately rejected because he was just a puny flat skin. Man, these Shek sure knew how to keep Rook humble. Rook walked away and spoke with Kang briefly. He asked Kang to say the exact same thing to the drifter and see what she would say if it came from a fellow Shek. Kang spoke with her. No questions asked, she said that she was in if they would pay her 6,000 cats. They accepted and she became the newest recruit to the team. Her name was Major Y. She was very tall, and like all the other Shek recruits, Rook saw a lot of great potential in her as a fighter. Rook spoke to one more Shek drifter sitting beside them, who overheard their conversation with Major Y. She said that she was looking for a fresh start and wanted to leave Squin. Rook paid her 6,000 more cats on the spot and recruited her as well. Her name was Shia, and she was ready to leave immediately. This was an incredibly successful trip to Squin. Rook surveyed the room one last time and couldn't find any other recruits. It was time for them to leave, so they gathered outside as a group. Riven joined the rest of the lot and Rook introduced her to the others. To keep track of everything more easily, Rook and the new recruits were placed in a separate squad. Six new recruits, and that was only from one way station in Squin. This was a good start, but Rook wanted to continue traveling and see who else he could recruit. He set the hub as their next destination on the map and they moved on as a group. These six recruits were still fresh and quite weak. Rook had a lot of work cut out for him with this bunch, but they had a lot of promise. Before this, the only Shek who were part of the Liberators were Seto and Yolo Horse. Rook was sure they would be happy to see more of their kind joining in their efforts against the slavers in United Cities. Their travels to the hub were interrupted by a group of dust bandits, who jumped them by the road. This would actually be a great start to their training. Rook told the recruits to prepare themselves for a fight. He wouldn't join them unless he had to. He would simply stay back and block the attacks of any bandits that came at him. Rook wished them luck as they charged in towards their enemy. They grouped up against the first bandits, which were foolish enough to charge in ahead of the rest of their men. As one of the bandits rolled down the hill, the recruits dispersed to fight the other men as they poured in. Rook was impressed. I mean, they weren't good fighters, but they were holding their own much better than he thought they would. 
Slowly but surely, they were becoming overwhelmed by the dust bandits and started to get beaten back. Rook decided that it was time to intervene, so he joined the fight and danced around the bandits, taking them out with ease. As he finished off the last of the bandits, they bandaged up the wounded. Us bandits were tough for a group of newbies. They did a good job, all things considered. It took a long time to patch them up, but they finally finished and carried the unconscious ones with them. They arrived at the hub late that night. They moved slowly as a group after the fight with the dust bandits. First thing they did was find the nearby bar and use their beds to lay the unconscious recruits in to heal up. Rook found another Shek that was willing to join their team for 6,000 cats. His name was Toddy and he seemed as eager as the rest of them to train under Rook. Rook spoke with the other bar patron who completely ignored him since he was a flat skin. Rook asked Toddy to speak with him instead and he was instantly interested in joining up since it was a fellow Shek asking him. His name was Topi. The hub changed quite a bit after the war. The hub was a run-down, mostly ruined city before the Shek took over. Many of the buildings were reconstructed and used to house their people. Rook traveled to the second bar that wasn't there previously and looked around for more recruits. It was filled with tech hunters and mercenaries who weren't looking to join the Liberators. Rook ordered everyone to rest up on the beds scattered throughout the area and they would depart in the morning. A few hours later, they were in good enough shape to continue traveling, so they met by the entrance of the hub. Eight new recruits was enough for now. Rook told them that they were going back home to New Raleigh, where their training would begin immediately. Back home, the Liberators were still getting raided by Kral's Chosen every so often. Rook expected this to happen and gave his men a little task to complete while he was gone. Mac looted one of the dying enemies and then gave him first aid to make sure he survived. He bandaged another enemy laying by his feet and saw another Kral's Chosen charging up the ramp towards Rockius. Mac popped off a quick shot from his crossbow and dropped him. Then Rockius came down and grabbed the other prisoner and got to work. One of their empty buildings was being converted into a training hall. If the Kral's Chosen would continue to throw their men at New Raleigh, they were going to put them to good use. A few prisoner cages would be built in the upper room to house their guests for a period of time. Ryan, being a master weaponsmith, designed some new training weapons with dulled blades that would allow the men to fight without damaging one another and they wanted to put it to good use. Mac put one of their prisoners in a cage while finishing up the construction of the rest of the room. Rook returned with the new recruits and let them know that training would begin soon. The new recruits weren't the only ones that would be training though. Rook went to the armory and grabbed two of the training cleavers. He examined the dull blades and nodded with a look of approval. It was time to get back to work. Rook made his way to the training hall and approached his prisoner, his sparring buddy, and gave him the second training blade. He scooped him out of his cell and laid him down to begin fighting. Oh. Uh, okay then. Anyways, after the prisoner was healed up and conscious again, they began fighting. Rook felt rusty. He's been constantly facing enemies since after the war against the Holy Nation, but they've mostly been meager bandits that stood no chance against him. He wanted to hone his skills even further, and sparring one-on-one -on -one would help with this. The prisoner was a decent match too. He was landing hits against Rook and blocking attacks with skill. Meanwhile, their old training facility where the Seven Liberators originally fought against the Head of Agriculture was remodeled for the new recruits to hone their skills. Rook developed exercises and drills that he found helped with training inexperienced fighters. All eight of the recruits were tasked to train most of the day, every day, rain or shine. It was grueling work, very exhausting and tedious, but it was effective. Even if some of it looked unconventional. Rook assured them that this was the best way to train, and train they did. They continued at it non-stop for days at a time. At the same time, Rook had the Liberators spar with him against their prisoner. It seemed unfair, five against one, but they were getting stronger, and that's all that mattered. Once they finished, five of the new Shek recruits began sparring with the prisoner as well. They continued to do this non-stop for days. Rook's process was meant to turn any common drifter into a formidable fighter as quickly as possible, but it was very strenuous work. Ryan's pacing was too slow to keep up with the demand of equipment. Making black and chainmail armor took a very long time to craft, so Riven was assigned to train under him as an apprentice. She was a fast learner and had a keen eye for smithing. With her help, they'd be able to create a surplus of armor for all the potential new recruits that they would bring in. Days went by and the other recruits continued training, but Rook knew that this wouldn't be enough to take on the might of both the slavers and the United Cities. He asked Tao to join him outside of the Eastern Gate and they talked about their next steps. Rook explained to Tao that they cleaned out Squin and the hub of potential recruits, but there was still a lot of ground to cover. 
They would travel north together to surrounding way stations and cities, finding anyone that was willing to join their cause. But he wanted to have a friend come with them as company while they traveled and grew their numbers. Tao graciously accepted Rook's offer and they marked a way station near the hub as their first destination on the map and began their travels together. They moved very quickly together, even though Tao had to slow his pace down a lot just so Rook could keep up. They were making good time as they traveled through the swamp into the desert, sharing stories and jokes as they ran. Tao was Rook's closest friend and they'd been through a lot together. He was happy that Tao requested to join Rook in the upcoming war. He didn't want Tao to have to bloody his hands like he already did, but that was Tao's choice to make, not his. It would be good to have a friend fight alongside him and help him share the burden of the war that they would soon be waging. Tao was eager to bring justice to other slaves that weren't as fortunate as he was and still rotting in a cage somewhere. It wasn't just Rook's fight anymore. This was bigger than all of them, but it would be foolish to face their enemies too early. They would build their army and bide their time until the right moment to strike was at hand, and that would come soon enough. As they approached their destination, they saw the way station on the clifftop. Excited to find the next recruits to join the Liberators, Rook and Tao picked up their pace with high hopes of what was to come. My lord? My lord? I received a new report from our spies in the West. It's about Rook. Oh, hello, peasant. What are you talking about now? Uh, my lord, Rook, the one who united with the Shek Nation, captured the Phoenix, caused the Holy Nation to crumble. You tasked me with keeping watch of his actions, tracking his movement. Well, I've received reports that- I remember Rook. I remember him well. A simple man, I recall. He once approached me, had the audacity to speak to me directly. You know what I did? I sent him- <laughs> I sent him on a special quest to defeat an ancient grieve wrath, and he accepted! I spit the remains of a green fruit I was eating into his sack and gave it to him so he could deliver it to a skeleton wizard. The fool. Very good, my lord. <laughs> yeah, that- you know what, that was a good prank, my prank? lord. Prank? Who said anything about prank? Do you think your emperor is some kind of jester? Acting like a fool to entertain his subjects? No, 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 of course not, my lord. I would never- I jest. Of course it was a prank. I sent him off on a wild hunt and he was stupid enough to believe me. Very clever, my lord. Very clever indeed. But I wanted to let you know the reports did come back. Rook has been traveling to nearby settlements. He's been disguised, although poorly, but he's using this opportunity to train and recruit them. Our spies suspect that the rumors are true. If Rook is building an army, he could very well march against us. They wanted me to deliver this report to you immediately to find out what you would like me to do. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. That sounds oddly familiar. Uh, I'm sorry, my lord. I, I don't quite follow what you're saying. When I met Rook, I could see his eyes through his stupid glasses. Those eyes. I witnessed that he would do anything it took to achieve his end. Tell our spies to keep a close eye on him, and continue sending updates. We'll start reinforcing our own army as well. I'll also send a warning to the other United Cities and let them figure out their own plan. Captain. Captain. Yes, your highness. My war mask. Bring me my war mask. At once, your highness. One moment, please. Here you are, my lord. That's better. If this Rook is looking to fight against us, he won't be disappointed. Now, steal yourselves. We must start preparing. Be gone. Go. Now. Would you dare challenge me, Rook? You truly are a greater fool than I could have imagined. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to make a special thanks to the amazing Ambiguous Amphibian and my friend Bardic Button for generously participating in this series. I really appreciate it. If you haven't checked out their channels, please do. They make amazing content and subscribing to Button's channel helps support a great and up and coming content creator. If you liked this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see more. I want to shout out my newest patrons, Paul Pham and Pseudo Bob. Thanks so much for your support. I also want to thank all my patrons who are helping support the channel so that I can focus on making content like this more regularly. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.